Hey everyone, it's Jay here, and today I want to go over different types of Python interview questions and examples of how to answer them. Specifically, I want you guys to know what are the different kinds of Python interview questions. We're talking about data structures, arrays, data science. People have different kinds of misconceptions about this, so let's dive into the video. So if you guys don't know already, Python is a multidisciplinary programming language. The type of Python interview questions that you're going to be asked on the interview will differ based on the field that you're trying to get into. For example, Jobs with data set manipulation, we're going to be tackling and using pandas. Other hand, for jobs that might require web scraping or knowing about scraping, they might ask you questions about beautiful soup, which is a library used in Python as well. But before we jump into all of that, let's first talk about the most basic kinds of Python interview questions that might show up for everyone, especially when you're interviewing in the very beginning or in the very early stages of your career. These kind of Python interview questions are just what I call conceptual Python interview questions questions or just easy Python questions because they don't actually test you having to code anything. They're more like definition questions that you might get asked on the test or some sort of primer to know that you generally understand these concepts around Python. So for example, they might ask you something like, what's the difference between a list and a tuple in Python? Now, if you know anything about Python, you know that both lists and tuples are specific data structures that generally exist in Python only, uh, or maybe not. <laughs> but these kinds of questions are what you're expected to receive just to test your general foundational knowledge of Python. Or if you're an entry level engineer or you're like a QA engineer or an entry level data scientist, just so that they know that you've experimented with the programming language. It's also something that the recruiter might even know to ask because they have a nice little question and answer sheet where they can assess your answer and they might know enough about Python to also be able to judge it as well. Another example of this kind of question is, what is a negative index in Python? In answering this question, as we know, a negative index, for example, negative one, basically returns the value of the array or the list, basically based on that position going backwards. So if we have a negative index of negative one or negative two, then it's gonna return the last element in the array or the second to last element in the array. So again, this is not technically a hard question. It's actually just a fundamental definition of how Python works. But these questions will be asked if you're just interviewing for a role that might not require you to basically code in production, specifically just know how to manipulate a script. And they just wanna know that you have some fundamental knowledge about Python where you could just jump in there and fix things, but maybe not be expected to code things up from scratch yourself. So examples of positions of, like these are in HR analysts, uh, data analysts that focus exclusively on Excel, but might need to do a little bit of Python encoding. Potentially, if you work in growth marketing as well, really common. And also product managers that might not be too technical, but might need to take ownership of some Python scripts. The next really common Python type of interview questions are around data structures and algorithms. These are the kind of questions that everyone expects to receive when they talk about Python interview questions, because it's the type that people practice for hours on programming sites like Leak Code or Interview Query, just so that they can basically code up a good, strong, optimized solution for their interviewer, because it is a case study in terms of how do you solve this practice problem. Python syntax is also really expressive and human readable, which allows programmers to focus on the algorithmic thinking process instead of wrestling with different kinds of syntax. It's the most common language used for interviews as well, which is why a lot of people practice and basically utilize it. And you're definitely expected to understand data structures and algorithms if you're interviewing for highly technical roles like data engineering, uh, software engineering, front-end engineering, some data science roles as well, and machine learning engineering. For these roles, it really requires an expertise in Python algorithms because the focus shifts to more specialized positions where advanced programming skills are crucial. So for example, here's an easy data structures and algorithms question in Python. Given a list, write a function called last element to return the last element of the list. So pretty simply, we're taking in a list and we're finding the last element and just returning it function. Now that's a very simple question and answer in data structure. If we take that a little bit harder, we could ask a question like, given a string, write a function recurring character to find its first recurring character, return none if there's no recurring character. So for a question like this, we have to loop through the entire string one by one. And once we identify a character, we have to save it to a hash map or into a set. And then every single time we go through this list, we just have to check to see if that value of like the character still exists in that set. If it does, then we return that character. And that's how we'd solve that question. 
So also a pretty easy one, but this gets really hard really fast. For example, you're given two rectangles A and B, each defined by four ordered pairs denoting their corners on the X, Y plane. Write a function rectangle overlap to determine whether or not they overlap. Return true if so and false otherwise. And so for this kind of problem, now we're dealing with representing 2D objects in a two-dimensional space. We actually have to solve this using code. And so this is a classic example of data structures and algorithms in action. The solution to this kind of question is pretty straightforward. We have to compare the four points of one rectangle to the X and Y interval of the other. That means that you must find the interval of the values in the rectangle and loop through each one of the points and they'll hold that rectangle and check if both of the X and Y are in the intervals. In general, these kinds of interview questions show up mainly in software engineering, data engineering, and machine learning engineering interviews. For these roles, they're highly technical in nature, and they expect that you have these foundational understandings of how to solve these interview questions, not only because some of them might be applied in your real life job scenario, but also because they're a litmus test for understanding who is actually a strong engineer and who is a bad engineer, even if they're not actually applied in the job. Google, for example, uses these types of questions to really just weed out uh, the bottom 90% of all the candidates and just understand which of the top candidates are. It's really important because they select your solution ability based on how quickly you can solve the problem, how optimized your solution is, and how clear you can communicate on the problem when you're actually solving it as well. It's really important to explain your thought process because that's how they actually know that you know how to solve these kinds of questions with clear efficiency. All right, let's dive into the next kind of Python interview question. And this is one of my favorites because they're more focused on in my domain, which is data science and analytics. Python is the most popular language for data manipulation and data analysis due to its diverse and powerful libraries and modules such as NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and SciPy. If you plan to work in the data domain, these libraries and string manipulation techniques are essential for mastering these kinds of interview questions. And additionally, the reason why I like these kinds of questions more is because they do represent more of what it's like to actually work on the job sometimes. They involve either algorithms, data manipulation, or a combination of both. For example, here's a really common question asked for data scientists. You're given a data frame containing a list of the price of various cheeses from California but the data frame has missing values in the price column. Write a function called cheese medium to impute the median price of the selected California cheeses in the data frame in place of the missing value. So this requires you to know two things actually. One is actually how to run an imputation, which is basically take the median of all the values and then insert it into all the empty values. And then two, to understand what imputation actually means. So that's actually what you have to know beforehand before you actually apply this. For this problem, it's actually pretty easy. We can apply the median value across the entire data frame with just one line of code. And then we can actually insert that into all of the empty columns by using the fill NA function. Here's another kind of data science and analytics Python interview question that's more on the probability side. For example, write a question to simulate drawing balls from a jar. The colors of the balls are stored in a list named jar with corresponding counts of the balls stored in the same index in a list called n balls. So this kind of question is asked because of the fact that it's trying to simulate a sampling almost. So in data science, we do a lot of sampling. We have to do bootstrap sampling or we have to do random sampling over a population. And for this kind of question, we're trying to basically apply a weight to the kinds of sampling that we need to do. Here's another question. So write a function to return a data frame containing every transaction with a total value over $100. You're given two data frames, transactions, and products. The goal here is to join both of the tables together and then to basically filter for the ones where the total value is over $100. I like this question because this is essentially a SQL question as well. SQL and Pandas questions are very much similar in which we're basically given a data set and we have to return um, some sort of result after applying some filtering, aggregation, or any other kind of functions to the data set, right? So we're transforming the data set from one kind of matrice into another kind of result matrice. Lastly, a much harder kind of data science more algorithms question mix would be implement the k-means clustering algorithm in Python from scratch, given the following. A two-dimensional NumPy array, data points as an arbitrary number of data points, an arbitrary number of columns, the number of k clusters, and the initial centroids value 
of each data point and each cluster. This is a very hard type of question where we're basically building the k-means algorithm from scratch, which is a machine learning model that you learn in Python. A lot of the packages like scikit-learn in Python have this function already, but a lot of the companies that are hiring for really technical kind of machine learning engineering or research scientist roles want you to understand basically the actual inner workings of these algorithms and how you code them from scratch. Because if you need to create your own custom machine learning algorithm, for example, or they just want to know that you can apply theory into practice, we'll ask you to see how fast you can actually build this kind of custom algorithm in a live coding interview. All right, now we're getting into more of the position and industry specific types of Python interview questions. For the next one is around basically QA testing. Basically, if you're interviewing for a QA engineer, you're gonna get questions like this. So create a Selenium test script in Python that performs the following actions on a web page. It navigates to the main page of the web, locates a search input box and enters a specific search term and submit the search and wait for the results to load. Or here's another question. Write a PyTest function to test an API endpoint that retrieves user details. The API endpoint is get users user ID and it should return a JSON object with user details. And lastly, design an automated test scenario for a file upload feature in a web application. Your test should automatically navigate to the web page select a file from the local system and upload the file using the web form. So again, these are very specific to QA engineering, but because Python is so relevant in QA engineering, you might get these kinds of questions if you're interviewing for obviously a quality assurance or testing software testing role. Now, additionally on that side, we have another form of engineering called DevOps. And here we do have an emerging amount of Python questions as well that are specific to this kind of industry. In DevOps, also understanding how to handle memory and storage with Python is pretty essential. So one pretty simple one would be explain Python's memory model and how it works. So if you look at the following code block, when we reach the memory function call, is the reference to x still the same? Is the value of x still stored in the stack or in the heap? How about y? So for a question like this, it's pretty important to understand the actual foundational knowledge behind Python. A lot of it we take for granted as a higher level programming language. So for this kind of question, basically look at the variable x reference within the memory function is not the same x that is defined in the main function. So in Python, we know that functions have their own local scope and x inside the memory function is different and the local variable is not defined at the point where print x is called. So this would actually lead to an unbound local error. Here's another question that is asked, explain the global interpreter lock and its effect on Python's memory model. So again, this is more of a definition-based question, but it's very industry specific for uh, actually understanding how memory works. We know that the global interpreter lock is a vital aspect of Python's memory management system because it affects the performance of multi-threaded applications here. The lock is necessary because Python's memory management is also not thread safe. So to work around the limitations imposed by the global interpreter lock in CPU bound scenarios, developers often use multi-processing instead of multi-threading. All right, if by chance you are preparing for a Python data science interview question, I highly recommend that you check out Interview Query. We've been around for five years now and we are 100% designed to level you up for the data science interview, specifically around your coding, your SQL questions, and case study type questions. But for Python, it is one of the most popular languages and most popular problem sets on our website, and you can check it out. We have hundreds of different Python interview questions with all the different types that I mentioned today on the site, but don't take just my word for it. Check out one of the testimonials we have from a member on Interview Query that got a job after using the platform for a few months. This member is a data scientist now at Home Depot, and what he said was, Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, a lot of the problems really help my Python abilities. And while I like the lead code interface, I felt like it was focusing more on software engineering type instead of data science. And I guess it worked out because I think those are honestly my two strongest skills now, SQL and Python, and I really attribute a lot of it to interview query. So there you go. We love our members. We love getting you guys jobs. And if you're preparing for a Python interview, please check out interview query for your interview prep. I'm Data Science Jay, and I'll talk to you guys later.